everyone and welcome my name's Amy so um, you may be new here as this is a book haul it's a bit different to what I normally do um, although these are all charity shop finds so if you're one of my regular viewers and subscribers hi and I hope you enjoy and for those of you new yet yeah, it's a mini book I say mini book haul I've got two stacks of books um, all charity shop finds my first one is a book I'm reading at the moment and then the rest of what I've got today which are mostly for my sister and then I have a second stack um, grab this one a second stack which are books that I found yesterday so I am going to mention I'm dyslexic so I am going to struggle a bit a bit with reading the back of the books but what I will do um, the ones that I do really struggle the most with I will turn it around and I will show you the back if you want to pause to read yourself obviously being dyslexic reading can be frustrating especially when you're struggling with words but I do find the more I read the quicker I get at reading and the less words I do struggle with, but I will always struggle with some words. So like when I read Harry Potter when I was about 14, 15, um, Dumbledore could, one of the words that I can remember off the top of my head that I could not read was Dumbledore. I didn't know he was Dumbledore until um, the films. And I, to me, when I was reading the books, he was just, oh, that's the guy that begins with a D. <laughs> but then it came out, I was like, oh, that's his name. So the first one I've got is this Times Legacy from Reality to legend to secret is it a sunday times bestseller that is the front cover I'm, i don't know about you i'm very much drawn in by covers first and then i'll have a read and see whether i'm gonna like it so this was a pound instead of 7.99 and it is over 500 pages long so when i first got it i was like wow you know because i've only just recently this year well the last like month or so got back into reading i was like if you're sure you want to get this Amy, because it's quite a big book um, for you to try and have a go at when I'm still at that stage where I am struggling a little bit more than when I did in the past when I did a lot more reading I didn't struggle quite as much but I'm so glad I did I'm not gonna lie it did take me I think to at least chapter three until I was definitely 100% gripped and I was like no I need to finish this book I found it a little bit slow to begin with but I am really enjoying it now so um, ancient secrets buried deep in Glastonbury's past, one woman's quest finally to set them free. Cambridge present day, following the death of her mother, Abby receives a mysterious misshapen crystal spear. It does say what it's called, but I can't read that bit, which seems to give her glimpses of concealed mysteries long covered up by the church. Western England, 25 AD, a stranger has come to the chilly Somerset wetlands with a story of hope and reconciliation but he's been followed by powerful forces determined he will not undermine roman rule in britain abby questions what connects these ancient events and her gift and why so many people seem desperate to hide the truth so i took this on the school run earlier and i also take it to work and i'm reading on lunch and like my 40 minute break now at work but it's not long enough because i'm like i want to keep reading but yeah i'm really enjoying that one this next one is one from my sister that I picked up today. This one was a pound, original price 7 99 Again, this goes between two different um, times. So we've got summer 1924 and then winter 1999. Um, it is the House of Riverton. Summer 1924, on the eve of a glistering society party by the lake of a grand English country house, a young poet takes his life. The only witnesses are sisters Hannah and can't read the other sister's name. We'll never speak to each other again. Winter 1999, Grace Bradley, 98, one time housemaid at Riverton Manor, is visited by a young director making a film about the poet's suicide. Ghosts awaken and old memories long considered, no, consigned to the dark reaches of Grace's mind begin to sneak back through the cracks. A shocking secret threatens to emerge. Something history has forgotten, but Grace never could. So I do, it's not my sort of book, but I do think it's definitely my sister's sort of book. And as I struggled with a few words, I'm just gonna hold that up for you. This next one's a funny story. So I got this yesterday, switched. And then today when I was looking, oh, grabbing two books there. I got that and I saw obviously the spine bit first oh that looks good and then when I looked at the front cover I was like that looks really familiar 
there we go so it turns out this book is actually um a trilogy i um denied about getting it because obviously i haven't started reading this one yet i think this one was 50p and i was like mm, if i don't like it but then i thought if i do love it i'm then gonna have to try and find the other ones so i thought you know what it was one pound 50 for this i thought i'll just get it and i can just donate this one back again so i will very quickly show you that because that is a lot for me to try and read for you if you want to pause um so basically i'll give it a go wendy knew she was different the day her mother tried to kill her and accused her of having been switched at birth although certain she's not the monster her mother claims she is she does feel she doesn't quite fit in. She's bored and frustrated by a small town life. And there's the secret that she can't tell anyone, her mysterious ability. She can influence people's decisions without knowing how or why. When the intense and darkly handsome newcomer, Finn, suddenly turns up at her bedroom window one night, her world is turned upside down. He holds the key to her past, the answers to her strange powers, and the doorway to a place she never imagined could exist. Foring, foring, the home of the trial, trial, trial. See, little glimpse there of what it's like. Finally, everything makes sense among the, I don't know, maybe it's a family, I'm not sure. Wendy is not just different, but special, but what marks her out as a chosen for greatness in this world also places her in grave danger. With everything around her changing, Finn is the only person she can trust. But dark forces are conspiring not only to separate them, but to see the downfall of everything that Wendy cares about. I was a little bit unsure, but I thought for 50p I'd give it a go. And then I saw Mel ended up with two copies of the one. But there we go. I didn't want to be like, oh, I enjoyed it. And then struggling to find the other ones. These two are my, for my sister. So she's just got back into reading again. Um... These are not my sort of books, but she does love this author. And she just said, if you find them, grab them for me. These were actually my best bargain. These were 20p each. Um, so this one, can we ever really know her children? So basically there are two families that have lived next door to each other for 18 years. Um, they go on picnics, they've shared chicken pops and all that sort of stuff together. Um, I don't know which family the children are from, but you've got Chris and Emily and yeah, when they're at high school, their friendship blossoms into something else. But then when the midnight call comes from the hospital, no one is prepared. Emily's dead at 17 from a gunshot wound to the head, inflicted by Chris as a pact of an apparent suicide pact. He tells police the next bullet was meant for himself. A local detective has her doubts. And the two families must face every parent's worst nightmare and question, do we ever really know her children? And then this one, I did read, I do actually like the sound of this one. I'd quite like it, like if they turned it into like um like a like one of her books, was it? My Sister's Keeper was a film. I think this would make a good one as well. So it's leaving time, a mother's love, a daughter's search for the truth, a mystery that will not rest. Jenny Metcalf was with her mother the night she disappeared in tragic and mysterious circumstances but she remembers nothing ten years have passed and still jenny reads and reads her mother's journals hoping to find some clue hidden there in the miscellaneous recordings of her scientific research with elephants desperate for answers jenny uses all her savings to recruit the aid of a private detective and psychic jenny knows her mother loved her she knows she would not leave her and she will rest, not rest until she finds out what happened that night. So that does actually sound quite interesting. This, I believe, I think is most likely a teen fiction book. Um, Longbow Girl. This, I can't remember which one I had this one. It's either a pound or 50p. Um, school girl Mary faces the loss of her family's farm. For centuries, the Owens have bred ponies in the shadow of the dark castle, the wild Welsh home of their arch enemies. And I'm assuming they're French. Um, I will show you because it's got um, D and then then a name just on the bottom there for you. Um, in the roots of a storm-turned tree, she makes an extraordinary discovery, a treasure that offers her the chance to turn back time and change past filled with untold secrets and danger. Mary is brave enough 
for most things. She's a skilled rider, archer, bomb fighter, but is she ready for this? The greatest adventure of her life. And it does say on here, try it, read page 304, where I already discovered that she'd gone back in time somehow. And I thought, oh, that sounds quite good. So I picked that up. I have a nine-year-old son and I've picked up from the same sh um, shop as my next book after this, Stuart Little. This was pound. It's not a massive reader, but I am hoping the more I'm reading now that that might rub off on him. Then this is teen fiction, but I got a few lines down. I was like, yeah, I'm definitely getting that. This was a pound, the untold story. Will a librarian do anything for her library? Librarian spy Irene is heading into danger and not for the first time, but could this be her last assignment? She's been tasked with high stakes solo mission to eliminate an old enemy and failure is not an option. Yet even more troubling news emerges, emerges multiple worlds are disappearing and the library may be involved. That's where I was like, oh, I'm getting this. Determined to uncover the truth behind these dangerous whispers, Irene and friends descend into the library's unplumbed depths and there they unearth an old and terrible secret that transforms everything Irene thought she knew. This knowledge could change her world, but can she survive long enough to share it? Quite tempted for that to be my next book that I'm going to read after the one I'm currently reading. Another one of this lady's books, this time this is for the mother-in-law. So I, I didn't read the back of this um, until now. And I'm just like, wow, what a coincidence. So I just took a picture of it because I know she likes these books and she's got several of them. And I was like, oh, well, have you got this one? And she got back to me really quickly and was like, no, it doesn't ring a bell. I was like, great, I'll get it for you. Um, it was a pound. Um, from the moment Ross's fiance Amy, spelt the same way as I spell it, A-I-M-E-E, -E, was killed in a car accident, He's been trying to die too, but life won't let him go. His only hope now is that Amy will come to him. So when he hears of strange happenings at an ancient Indian burial ground near his sister's home, he descends to Kumskukuk. I will show you in a second. Desperate for rumours of a haunting to be true. What he finds there is not Amy's ghost, but Lila Leela, L-I-A. A very real woman whose life is filled filled with as many troubled secrets as his own. But yeah, what are the odds? So that will be going to her. Next up we have Rebel Heiress. I think this might have been 50p. Most of these books were over 50p or a pound, apart from my two really good bargains at 20p. Um, dangerous times, born into a world, seething with tetracy te 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 and suspicion. Eleanor Good Goodrick, Goodrick, I want to say, grows up on the Somerset levels just after the English Civil Wars. Heiress to her late mother's estates and daughter of a Puritan soldier who fears for his brilliant daughter with her dangerous passion for natural history and for butterflies in particular. Her reckless courage will take her to places where no woman of her day even dare to go. Her fearless ambition will give her a place in history for all time, but it is it's her passionate heart which will lead her into consuming love and mortal peril. Not quite normal, my normal read, but again, when the books, when you get books from charity shops and like 50p, 20p or a pound, you know, it's not a great loss if you don't enjoy it to pass it on to someone else or donate it back again. Now this book I must really love because I've managed to buy it twice. So about a year ago, I bought a couple of books from Tesco. I got this one, which I haven't got round to reading. And then I bought it again for a pound. <laughs> So I'm going to pass, it does seem like it might be my sister's sort of thing, so I'm going to pass it on to her, one of these on to her, and if she doesn't like it, then I will donate one of them to the charity shop. Um, so we're going back in time again. England, 1648, a dangerous time for a woman to be different. Midsummer's Eve, 1648, and England is in the grip of civil war between... Hmm, a regained, regained king and a rebellious parliament. The struggles reach every corner of the kingdom 
even to the remote tidelands, the marsh landscape of the south coast. I cannot read her name. I will show you this in a second. A descendant of wise, of wise women trapped by poverty and suspicion waits in the graveyard under the full moon for a ghost who will declare her free from her abusive husband. Instead, she meets James, a young man on the run and shows him the secret ways across the treacherous march. Not knowing that she's leading disaster, leading disaster onto the heart of her life. Um, suspected of possessing dark secrets in suspicious times. Um, basically, she gets marked out from her neighbours. This is a time of, of witch Mina. Uh, a woman now without a husband, skilled with herbs, suddenly enriched, arouses envy in her rivals and feel among the villager, villagers who are ready to take lethal action into their own hands. Yeah, I struggled with that one a little bit, so I'm going to hold that up for you. Um, it did intrigue me and I was like, mm. but hopefully if I get into it, and though I do struggle, it should hopefully grip me enough to combat that. And hopefully as I get into it, I will be a lot better. And my last one, I do believe, is teen fiction. So back when I did read many years ago, um, I read a few of his books, J.P. Taylor. Uh, I have me a prophet boy, an oracle beyond oracles. The secrets of the universe are lodged between his cabbage ears. So if I remember rightly, I'm guessing he's probably set it again like the others because I think he's got this man might have been in the previous books I read going off memory. Um, basically, he has a blind boy who can see the future, but as the boy's powers become known, others seek to use them. Um, um, yeah, so others come look in. That was 50p, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to give that a go, as I did enjoy that author's books before. I hope you enjoyed that. Maybe some books to look out for. Um, let me know in the comments below if any of those took your fancy. And at some point, I will probably be back with another book haul when I've got through a lot of these. Because I'm probably not going to look for a while. I'm going to get through some of these, and then I will go on the rummage again at um, charity shops again. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, Give me a like if you did please thank you very much and i will hopefully see you all again soon take care and have a good week everybody bye